Hi everyone, welcome back. Do you remember 2009? More specifically, do you remember Avatar in 2009? Do you remember how big of a thing it was? And how everybody cared about that movie so much? And now people barely remember it. And do you remember what the big thing about Avatar was? Not the blue people, no. The 3D. Now 3D has been around for a long time. In fact, it's been around for a lot longer than most people think. 3D pictures have existed since the 19th century, and 3D movies have come and gone continuously over the years. 3D had a strong, albeit brief craze way back in the 1950s with movies like The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Even Alfred Hitchcock got in on the craze with his movie Dial M for Murder. The fad came back in the 80s with movies like the third Friday the 13th sequel and Jaws 3D. The clue's in the name with that one. The fad died out again and tended to stick to either the specialist IMAX theatres or theme parks, like in the case of Muppet Vision 3D, which honestly deserves its own video. Then we got movies like Spy Kids 3D and of course the masterpiece that I've already made a video on, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. But in the 21st century, nothing's managed to reignite the 3D craze quite like Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus' Best of Both Worlds concert in Disney Digital 3D. Wait, you see, with Avatar and other 3D movies that were coming out at the time, you no longer needed the terrible paper 3D glasses because they had a new system, which meant that you can now use the slightly less terrible plastic glasses. A real improvement. The combination of this big budget CGI movie with this new 3D system amazed people and Avatar became the highest grossing movie of all time. When I saw it, the woman in the seat in front of me kept waving her hands around in the air because she was trying to touch things on the screen. It's, it's not real, Karen. Please stop trying to touch it. The overwhelming success of Avatar convinced other movie studios that maybe this 3D thing was a good idea. According to Wikipedia, the number of 3D movies released went from just 5 in 2005 to 57 in 2010. Major blockbusters started releasing in 3D just because they could. And then we started getting 3D TVs and video games. The Shrek franchise re-released in 3D. What a year for cinema 2010 was. And then we all sort of stopped caring. Today I want to analyse parts of the 3D craze of the early 2010s, because it was weird, but also kind of cool. And now we have a lighting change, because it got dark outside. So Avatar definitely wasn't the first of this new wave of 3D movies, but it definitely sparked a lot more to come out. In fact, 3D was so popular in the early 2010s that Disney started re-releasing some of their movies in 3D. I'm talking Finding Nemo, I'm talking The Lion King, there's this really weird teaser for Toy Story 1 and 2. Buzz? Buzz? This is incredible. Buzz, where the heck are you? Right here, Woody. You've got to see this. What are you doing? These glasses, they let you see into the third dimension. You know that thing where they put 3D in the movie title? Yeah, they started doing that again. There was Jackass 3D, Saw 3D, the sequel to Street Dance 2 was Street Dance 3, D. And looking back at it now, so many of these movies really didn't need to be in 3D. I mean, they released a Titanic 3D. Is that a thing that people want to see? They want to see the ship just coming straight for them? Glee had a 3D concert movie, apparently. But even better than that, there was Jonas Brothers, the 3D concert experience. Maybe this is just because now we have it all on YouTube, but I've always wondered why somebody would go to the cinema to watch a concert movie. Do people just sit there in silence and watch a two hour concert? Do they cheer at the end of the songs? Or is that like clapping when the plane lands? If you saw Jonas Brothers, the 3D concert experience in cinemas, please, let me know. Now, of course, with all of these 3D movies coming out, companies were keen to keep making money after people had seen them in cinemas. It used to be that you just have an anaglyph DVD and you'd put a few sets of paper glasses in the box and you'd be done. But now the audiences had a taste for this new style of 3D. They wanted a way to experience it at home. Which brings me onto my next topic, 3D TVs. Now, 3D TVs were expensive when they came out. I think around 1400 for a regular size one, but I remember seeing one in a store for like 3000 And if you did decide to drop that much money on a TV, you'd have to fork over even more money for the one 3D channel that existed at the time. And it would show the occasional sports, and then, I don't know, like nature documentaries, I think? And what's the deal with that? When you see an ad for a TV, 3D or not, it's always just the most random footage, like cities at night, or cars driving on empty roads, or just landscapes. Do people actually sit in front of their giant OLED TV now and watch one hour of Windows XP backgrounds and think, hmm, yes, this is good value for money? There's this one ad for Samsung that shows a bunch of TVs around a city, and they're supposed to be adding a new dimension to life by showing, like, whales in a pond or something. First of all, I'm sorry to say this, but those waterfalls aren't real. 
I know, I was sad too. But also, can you imagine how weird it will be to be just walking around one day and then you see a bunch of TVs on the ground pretending to be a waterfall? The real kicker on this ad is this. 3D glasses sold separately. So you buy this TV and then you can't actually use the 3D on it because you have to buy the glasses as well. It wasn't just the one TV channel you could watch in 3D. 3D Blu-rays were now a thing. So now you've watched the Jonas Brothers in the cinema. Hey, why not watch them at home as well? Side note, the Jonas Brothers concert thing didn't actually come to 3D Blu-ray. It came out on regular Blu-ray with an anaglyph version included. Sorry. More and more video games started supporting 3D. Nvidia 3D Vision was a thing. Obviously the 3DS came out, which was even cooler actually because it had 3D with no glasses. The PS3 had 3D support for a surprisingly high number of games. Even Minecraft added a 3D anaglyph mode. I remember using a friend's 3DS for the first time and being amazed by the technology and thinking this is it. This is the future of gaming. Looking back now, it's kind of ridiculous the sort of things that we said about 3D. It's not just a screen, it's a window. Like, come on, it's a 3DS, get over it. It seemed that everything was getting 3 d -ified. including, and this is my favourite one, YouTube videos. Yeah, YouTube allowed 3D, which I think is something that a lot of people have forgotten about. But there are still videos out there that allow you to watch them in anaglyph mode. They're pretty old now and there's not very many of them, but they do exist. And to be honest, I think that YouTube 3D is the second coolest feature that YouTube's ever made. The first, of course, being the Vuvuzela button. And with all of these new things coming out and all of this money being pumped into 3D, maybe this time 3D is here to stay. No. Sorry. After only a couple of years, people began to forget about 3D. They started seeing it for what it was, a fad, and they stopped caring. Almost as quickly as it came in, 3D was on its way out. By 2013, the BBC had stopped airing shows in 3D altogether. 3D-only channels like Sky 3D had shut down and went to on-demand only. While consoles like the PlayStation 4 still supported 3D, it was no longer a top priority. Fewer and fewer people were choosing the 3D option in the cinema. After all, it is kind of annoying wearing those plastic glasses for two hours. And I guess if you've seen some movies in 3D already, is there really any point in doing it again? The format retreated back into the shadows of IMAX theatres and severely underrated theme park attractions. Except for Disney movies for some reason. Disney are still releasing movies in 3D and it seems they're not keen to let the format die anytime soon. I guess if you spend all that money pushing the Disney digital 3D brand, you don't really want to let it go. In fact, Frozen 2 was released on 3D Blu-ray in March of last year, making it only the second worst thing to happen in March 2020. In gaming, 3D gave way to VR, and it remains to be seen if that too is a fad or if it's here for good. Minecraft removed its 3D option in 1.13, and while the 3DS stuck around for a long time, it seems that Nintendo isn't keen to do anything with 3D right now, now that it's been discontinued. 3D is now just a thing that you see a logo for and think, oh yeah, remember when everyone cared about that for two years? But maybe 3D will come back sometime in the future. I mean, it's happened before, so why not again? Maybe when Avatar 2 comes out in 2014, it will reignite the craze. Wait, maybe when Avatar 2 comes out in 2016, it will reignite that craze. Seriously? Maybe when Avatar 2 comes out in 2018. Maybe when Avatar 2 comes out in 2020. Maybe when Avatar 2 comes out in 2022, it will reignite that craze. But that's all I've got to say about 3D. It's a really interesting topic because it's so similar to vaporware, except for the fact that 3D actually happened. A slightly shorter video than normal this time. I've been experimenting a lot with different topics and different sorts of videos, and I hope you've enjoyed hearing me talk about something new. If there's something else you'd like me to cover, let me know, and I'll see you next time.